AV Comet. I'm the Technical Product Specialist for the South Island for Tiger Cat, Tima and Timamax. So I've been invited by Rainiers to help get you guys thinking about a wee bit of safety while you're servicing. The easiest thing maybe for a start is just think what if. So when you're going to do any job, what if that moves? What if that head falls over? What if it rains? What if I'm actually in the wrong spot and we need to get trucks in and out? So just, just think what if when you go to do it. Have a bit of a plan, might be the best thing to make sure everyone knows what's going on, have a wee bit of chat about it, get a plan and get into your job. Everyone wants to go home at four o'clock or earlier if possible. So just think what if. So when you go to work on it, we're gonna have all our attachments on the ground. We're also going to isolate it. If, you, if you're gonna be working on it, you don't need the engine running. So we're not moving it, it's all finished. Engine off, isolator on if possible. And the guys here at Brands, have got these nice wee danger tags made up. Very clear, do not operate. That's stuck on the side of the cab. Like that, someone's name and the date. You can probably put your phone number on there too. Straight away you know I'm not gonna operate it. Um, AV equipment, we go probably a wee bit step further before we've even got to this stage. We'll pull out our phone. We've got a Take 5 app. It's really just a, an app based platform with a whole lot of series of questions on it about about the work we're going to undertake. You know, do I know what I'm going to do? Do I have the right tools? Um, environmental, um, dust, slips, trips, falls. Are we going to have vehicles running past us? Do we need to cone it off? So we, we have a wee app, bang, send it away. Gets emailed to our head office and our health and safety guys get to look at it. So once you've got your plan, you're going to be making sure you've got no stored energy. So usually that would mean engine off. Um, <coughs> good idea to take the keys out of the ignition on most things. I've had a couple of instances where people have left the keys in and they've been working on the other side of the machine. Someone's jumped in to move the skidder. They haven't had a danger tag system. And there was a really good one I heard of not that long ago. Um, mechanic pulled up to work on this guy's truck. Um, he talked to the driver. They had it decided that he was gonna work on the truck. The guy said, sweet, I'm gonna go and have a cup of coffee. Uh, the driver came back, jumped in his truck, started it, and was gonna drive off. The mechanic was underneath the back end working on one of the drive shafts. You know, he, he wouldn't fit between the axle, between the diff and the ground. So even though they'd had a plan, they'd talked about it, only 15 minutes ago, the guy had come out, forgotten completely about that, jumped in the truck and went the bugger off. So that situation, if the keys were in the mechanic's pocket, it would never have happened. If everyone on your site knows what you're doing, you've got a, if possible, a designated area. Um, some guys are coning, coning their area off, or they've got a designated site on their skid site. It's over there, everyone knows about it. The harvester guy is going to be facing away when he's doing his sawing. The log load is not going to be chucking trees or anything over there. There's no chance of, of anyone getting hurt. Hopefully it's beside your container with your tools in it. So it's just some simple steps like that to think of before you do anything. Attachments right on the ground. With, with an excavator like that, that is a pretty good situation, it's not going to go anywhere like that. However, even better would be to get that sock and the boom and stick even lower to the ground. Whether or not some of them will not quite get to the ground, so maybe they need to sit on a block of wood. Uh, most will get right to the ground. With a fouling head, I like to usually spin the head around so it's facing away from me, hit the saw button, lay that sock with the hanger back down on the ground and have the stick in the ground or on a nice piece of wood. That's, that's good, but if that boom and stick are on the ground, there's no way it's going any further. Especially with the Tiger Cats, 
I know that they will, their booms and arms will creep over a wee while. You should never rely on the hydraulic system. I mean, you might be taking one of those boom hoses or stick hoses off. Some machines, not all, you'll be able to remove any residual pressure in your hydraulic lines by turning the engine off, turning your key back on, having your bail lever up, and just operate your joysticks, travel pedals. Not all machines will do it, so if you are gonna be still taking hoses off, um, crack the hose, crack it off about a turn, and then stand back and give that hose a wee wiggle. Don't, don't go in there with your hands until you uh, guarantee there's no oil there. You don't want a thing called fluid injection. So that's when you can end up with either oil, grease or fuel getting into your skin and into your, into your body. Uh, for example, the high pressure fuel system on that engine at its maximum setting will be 1800 bar, so it's something like 26,000 psi. So the, I think it takes 70 psi or something to actually get into your skin. And what happens is your body is not designed to run on oil, so the body attacks it. And it actually starts killing off, say, your finger. And if you leave it, it gets into your hand. And if you still leave it, it gets into your arm. And it'll get to the point where the only way that they can save your life is by cutting your limb off. Not a very nice subject, but it, it can happen. Getting rid of all that stored energy, not doing stuff with their hands. Don't go searching for hydraulic leaks with your hands. Never touch a, uh, the high pressure fuel system. Um, our guys are told you turn the engine off and you've got to wait 10 minutes before you start doing anything on those engines or on the high pressure fuel lines. You just can't afford can't afford to get in contact with that high pressure fuel. Get the hose loosened off, take the hose off. Then we're going to have to start look at contamination control. So the modern machines, the hydraulic systems, uh, tolerances are so fine, we're talking thousands of a millimetre in some cases. So they cannot afford any dirt and dust. So you guys no doubt will be changing the tyres, you'll be doing some hoses, Hopefully your hose doctor's giving you the hose that's had a wad blown through it and it's either bagged or it's got plastic caps in it. It's not the one that's been rolling around inside there that's got no ends on it and it's got partly full of dust. It's, it's worse than useless. That, that sort of hose is only going to cost you and your boss thousands of dollars. When it getting deeper than, your, than the hydraulic hose, that's about the time you should be thinking, eh, should I actually be doing this? Is it time to ring brand mechanical, AV equipment, uh, Terra Cat, whoever your supplier is, and get them to do it? These days, if it's got oil running through it and it's not a hose, I would probably recommend you get someone else. If we're gonna be changing a tire, hopefully maybe even use the skitter to get a good flat surface, you're gonna have a supply of blocks no doubt, we'll be able to make some and you'll be able to usually, say if we're going to do the back axle, you'll be able to use the grapple and arch, lift that axle off the ground and place your blocks underneath it. Making sure that you're doing it from a wee bit of a distance and that you're never getting any part of your body between the top of the block and the frame of the machine. If it's off the ground, you're only relying on some O-rings and some hydraulic oil keeping that thing from, from falling. So the other crew or the other the other guys have a good idea, you know, you make some blocks that are big enough you can slide them into place without having to get anything in there. You can push it in with a shovel or something like that. Making sure you're nowhere near anything if it does come down no chance of you getting caught in there. Um, no doubt you'll be using a digger to lift the tyre off, so once you've got most of your bolts undone. I like the idea of putting a nice big wide strop around your tyre and a proper proper noose, so that the tighter, the tighter you pull on it, the tighter it gets, and you'll be able to take that tyre off. Um, it'll depend on whether 
how big a site is, whether or not you'll have the digger out here or out the side or, or that side lowering it on. I like to have some guide studs made up. Um, the Tiger Cat axles, they, they're just a flush end, so they don't have a, a spigot or anything, or a flange, and they don't have studs. So I always make up some guide bolts so you can screw a couple of guide bolts in, guide the tire on, then get the rest of the bolts in by hand and then start rattling them up. Then you can go through and fully torque your wheel nuts up, get the skidder going again, lift it up, take your blocks out, push them out from a distance, put it back down on the ground and away you go. Usually the blade's enough, but chocking, the, chocking any of the wheels is, is a good idea. Yep, yep. Especially if your ground conditions aren't that good or you're just a wee bit concerned. Definitely won't do any harm at all. Yep. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't move, but again, you're thinking, yeah, what if, what if it does move? Oh, I'd like to see, you know, you're putting the pivot lock in. So I showed the guys I could do that by myself. We're lucky with these, so we can sit in the cab, pivot, pivot the seat around and I can actually see the pin. So now that the locking pin's in, and you've got it still jacked up, you have no chance of the machine trying to pivot and slide and fall off. So anytime you're working in and around your centre joint or anytime you've got the wheel off the ground or even technically on a transporter, it's a really good idea to have your pivot lock in. It's just one more thing that you've done to guarantee your safety and the safety of the guys working around you. With the stuff that's in the oil now, there is no no oil you want on your hands or on your skin. Your skin's your biggest organ. We know for a fact that it absorbs chemicals. The chemicals that are in oils and stuff these days, particularly used oil, you do not want on your skin. So I'd recommend you get some boxes of disposable gloves or get some nice, um, nice gloves to wear. Um, whenever you're greasing, you're changing hoses, doing anything like that, Try to get in the habit of putting the gloves on. If you can, get that boom, you know, absolutely as low as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing that in a workshop, you would need a proper safe work platform, or you'd need a harness and, and all sorts of stuff. So, as low as possible. Um, often the bigger service trucks are great because the deck's already this high, so you can get it, get that boom down on the ground. You can back your service truck up to it and work on that. It may be that the best thing at the time is actually to put it over a bank. Maybe the best thing is to actually put it over a log stack. I know we're not supposed to be walking on log stacks, but it's probably better than tripping and stumbling and falling off there and falling onto the track here. Same as the guys pointed out, you know, trying to clean this front window in the cab. You know, how, how do you do it? Because even if you're standing on the on the boom, you're at the right height, but you're actually, you know, you're leaning out like this. Yeah, yeah. some guys have got the old extender pole. Yeah. Give it a wash. I, I won't recommend walking out on the boom. It's because it's not flat. Probably the pole pole brush is the best way to do it. You're doing it all from the ground. You're not walking out on top of your boom, you're not running the risk of stumbling, falling, bending pipes or standing on electrical wires or anything like that. We had a wee quick debate about that before about whether or not you'd, you'd come straight in with the digger or whether you'd come in from the side. Yeah. At some point, you know, it, it, you're in here doing this, aren't you? It's all su suspended. That, that's why I like the idea of having the, having the guide bolts in. So you've got some mechanical form of hanging on to the weight. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, AV equipment we've got I think we're up to 120 safe work procedures that have been written. It's a documented process about how to go about every task. Great if you're in a workshop. You come out in the field and you might as well throw half it away. But it is a good place to start thinking about it and go, yeah, well I can I can apply, you know, getting the getting the ground good, get a nice flat section of ground to work on. I'll, I'll find some good wood. And we'd use square blocks in the workshop, or we'd have a proper axle axle stand. 
probably not going to have that on the skid site, so we need some good wood and make, make a bit of time, get a good base for that wood to sit on. Minim, minimise the chance of falling off. Put our lock in, chock the wheels, keep the blade on the ground, keep the grapple down on the ground. Minimise all those things so that you can do the job safely in a good time, carry back on with the rest of your day. You're never going to put yourself between the track frame and the ground. You know, at least if you are tensioning your tracks, you'll be able to swing around, lift your track off the ground. You'll have a measurement between the bottom of the track frame and the track plate. You've got your grease gun attached to it and you're standing back out of the way pumping it. So you should you should never put yourself in a, be in a situation where, you, where you're too close. For the times when they do split the tracks, to do bottom rollers or take final drive out, take an idler out, split your track, lift the machine up and put blocks of wood on the between the track frame and the chain and set it down those blocks of wood and then that, that's safe, it's, it's not going to go anywhere and you'd still keep the boom sitting in the ground. Belly plates, if you're taking belly plates off, be super, super careful from taking belly plates off. I mean A, they're bloody heavy and you don't want it to slip. So it may be that it's a two-person job, unless you unless you've got a good process about it. Um, some belly plates will have a have a longer bolt that screws down, and then you can take the other bolts out, drop the plate around, swing it around out of the way. But most don't. So if you're doing belly plates yourself, be super careful about about getting those bolts out. The guys that are new to the industry. Or the guys driving the machines aren't experienced in that. And maybe no. there needs to be some sort of a training program for the yep. young guys. Yeah. For the, the new guys. Yeah, I was even so talking. That, that sort of thing doesn't happen. I talked to Tony and so on about that earlier. Sort of 10, 15 years ago, a lot of the guys I was talking to on these had quite a bit of mechanical knowledge because they started off on a chainsaw and then they'd operated the machine at lunchtime when no one else was using it and worked their way up and they'd been they'd had time to work with other guys and be shown how to do it. Like you're talking about with the belly guard, we yeah. know that <coughs> it can fall down and kill you. Yeah. But the young fella wouldn't have wouldn't have a clue. No. You get told to take that belly guard off, you just take the belly guard off. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I'll be going, uh, what if that slips? I'm gonna get something else, I'm gonna hold it up. Yeah. Gonna get someone else to give me a hand. I'm gonna get some sort of mechanical restraint, I'm going to tie it up. We call it starting and certain. Yeah. That's the sort of message we're trying to get Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I decided we'd go with what if. Yeah, but yeah, start when certain, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You've gone through the what ifs, and you go, right, we've got a clear plan, we've got our system, right, let's jump in and do it. Um, I think you said earlier, one of the best tools is your thermos. You know, have a quick drink, sort out your plan, and then go, because you know, this skitter here is nice and flat, but what if it was down the hill on an angle and it's wet? What do you do then? Then you really need everyone to buy into it and go, right, we can do this. No, that's not gonna work. Right, can we do this? Between, between the group here, you'll figure out a pretty good way of doing it. Get in and, and follow your plan. Your plan may change, but that's all right, as long as you start with the plan.